Salam everyone. So in this uh, lecture, which is going to be a short one, I'm just going to cover Surah 105, which is Surah al fil also known as the Surah of the Elephant, right? But we'll see before we jump to any conclusions. So here's the agenda for this particular lecture. Just a few points here. I'm going to cover the meaning of the word al-fil. And then number two, we'll take a look at the occurrence of the word in the Quran, how many times it actually has occurred. Number three, understanding Surah 105 within context. Fairly small surah, so we'll just go through it. It's also pretty straightforward. And then number four, we'll take a look at a little bit of analysis. What is the word Ta'ir means in this surah, what does the word feel means in this surah, just so that we understand clearly. And then number five, we'll take a look at the Quranic evidence on chapter 11, verse 82, and chapter 15, verse 74. So we'll come back to Quranic evidence in just a moment as I go through these agenda points. You'll know why I wrote this. And then number six is the actual understanding of al feel meaning elephant or we can judgment. And then of course we'll include and then you can decide. So if we follow the Quran alone, his Quran is a complete revelation. It's a complete book. It has no inconsistencies, right? In other words, it doesn't create any inconsistency. Once you read book from first verse to the last verse, it is a complete understanding guidance for mankind. And I'm going to stress this word again. It's for everyone. It's not just for Muslims, not just for Christians or Jews, but it's just for everyone. Whoever wants to seek guidance from God, this is the book. So, with that said, Quran being the complete book, nothing can come inside the Quran, nothing can go outside from the Quran, right? That's what the book claims. And it just so claims that, you know, if someone has any doubt regarding the Quran, then that person, you know, even Quran challenges mankind, bring forth such surah, right? or such type of revelation again, or such type of writings. So of course it's not man-made. So we've covered this in the previous uh, lectures or my other videos, you can look at that. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Dr. Syed Raza, and I'm a student of the Quran, researching this Quran for the last almost eight years now, from Arabic grammar to understanding from history, my understanding and my you know, keen liking of archeology span and evidence. So I've come across several things. And one of the things that I'm going to take a look at in this Surah 105 is actually this is just the reproduction of the Sam Guerin's Quran translation. And that's exactly what I use for all of my videos. I think he has done a wonderful job. He has built upon the work of Muhammad Asad, who was of Pakistani origin, by the way. His understanding and then Sam's understanding, of course, I'm trying to build upon the actual understanding. So we're all students of the Quran and we continuously learn and then we understand and we seek guidance from God. Perfect. Let's jump right in. Let's take a look at the meaning of the word al feel as being part of our first agenda point. So let me switch to the Lane's lexicon, which is basically the encyclopedia for Arabic words. So I'm going to quickly go to this particular PDF. And of course, this is available online. You can download, just search for Lane's lexicon or any other Arabic grammar, Lisan al Arabiya, for example. There are other books, Arabic grammar, that you can take a look at and then find out the word and its meanings, synonyms, antonyms, and other details. So this is on page, you can scroll to the left just so that you have a reference point, 2474 of Lane's lexicon. Okay, so page number. 2474. Perfect. So let's scroll to the right. Here's the word feel, okay, or feel, right? The paragraph here following. The word feel represents or means the elephant. Okay, al feel means the elephant and or a certain animal, well known. And if I go down a little bit, it says maybe originally from of the measure, fa'al, right? That's where the word comes from. So hence the Night like the color of the elephant, meaning a night that is black and dust color, in which one knows not the right course to pursue because it's just dark outside, you don't know where you're actually going. So, this also implies uh, this particular meaning. The colors of the field being of this kind, hence the disease called 
bias the tumor Barbados leg because of the leg of patient resembles that of the elephant by reason of its enormously swollen state not as some have supposed it to be so this is also a resemblance or one of the synonyms right of the word feel this latter being termed and then it also signifies heavy or dull and low ignoble or mean so for example one says rajalun feel rai right means a man weak in respect of judgment or so this is part of the third meaning right so we have the word feel which means the elephant right dull dark a leg swollen looks appears to be like an elephant so you know that's why the arabs also use this in the sentence but also means a man weak in respect of judgment or opinion so these are the primary three right so the meaning weak in respect of judgment or opinion the one who is inspecting forms and opinion and errs okay makes an error so if he err after examining a horse in all its states or conditions and forming an opinion respecting it from his inspection not while doing so he is reckoned to be fa'il so now we understand the various meanings of this word feel let's see how let's go to our next step we bring up our next agenda point so we understand the meaning of the word al feel various meanings rather let's take a look at the occurrence of the word in the quran how does the quran use this word so let me bring up the quran here great so this is surah al feel surah 105 short surah let's take a look at this bismillah rahman rahim in the name of god the almighty the merciful alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al feel hast thou not considered how thy Lord dealt with those, well, weak in judgment, right? So let's let's keep that aside. Typical translation means, hast thou not considered how thy Lord dealt with those, yes, how will feel people of the elephant, okay? So one of the meanings that typically found all across that I've researched is the word feel means elf, okay? So people of the elephant, right? Yes, how will feel, which then, subsequently or in turn is associated with the story of Abraha, right who wanted to destroy mecca and then god sent birds with stones and it killed all the elephants killed the king abraha and then you know everything was was saved okay by god so this is the short story and many of you already know this story right from childhood we've been taught this story so that's typical you know, meaning of when we read the Bayas Habu. But before I move forward, let me quickly jump to the Quran and see this particular word where else the Quran mentions this word. So let's navigate to our the triliteral root, fa ya lam, the root word occurs only once in the Quran. So and this is a noun. The translation below is a brief gloss intended to guide this meaning. So Al Feel, chapter one of five, right? Surah Al Feel means of the elephant so in the basic quran dictionary they only list one particular meaning of the elephant okay but let's observe and understand because the quran doesn't mention this word i'll feel anywhere else in the quran right so now we're kind of stuck like what do we do have there been more instances of the word i'll feel in the quran we could take a look at all of these instances and that's the strategy that's the research that i'm actually pursuing for all of the videos and lectures in the Quran is trying to build upon more and more of this pan-textual analysis. So had this word occurred in other surahs of the Quran, we could have looked at it and then, you know, formed an understanding or had additional evidence from the Quran itself. But guess what? This is the only instance in the Quran. So how do we actually now form the true or the correct meaning of the word feel? Is it the elephant? Is it the weak judgment? Is it dark? What is it? So to understand this, let's go back to the Quran. Perfect. Let's continue on. So let's start over. Hast thou not considered how thy Lord dealt with those either weak in judgment or the people of the elephant, right? So I'm going to stick to those two meanings until we actually form our conclusion based on Quranic evidence. Let's continue. Verse 2. Did he not make their plan go astray? And he sent against them he sent against them flights in successive waves. 
typical translation is he sent, you know, birds called Ababi, right? That's the name of the bird in succession. Hurling upon them stones of brimstone. Tarmihim bihijarati means then he made them like eaten straw. Tajalahum kasfin makru. That's really it's five verses. So the only thing the basic understanding of this context is God is talking about some people, some Bayashab, right? There's some people, either people of the elephant or people in weak judgment. We don't know yet. That's where we'll figure out based on Quranic evidence. And then he destroyed their plan by sending some types of birds or flights, successive waves or actual birds, perhaps, which threw stones upon them, made them like eaten straw. Let's go back to our word feel, bring up my agenda here. So the word ta'ir, which is this word right here, behind, wa'arsal alayhim ta'iran. So the word ta'ir, this does mean, you know, the word bird, as per traditionalist stories. However, the word for bird is simply the active participle from the word thara, fly. And it also means flying things, flights, and omen. All right, let's take a look at the Quranic evidence. What else can we actually come up with when we take a look at the, these five verses and try to understand? Because the only instance of al-fil is just this one word in the Quran. There's nowhere else. But if you analyze more carefully the word in verse 4, which is tarmihim bihijaratim in sijil, turning upon them stones or brimstone, is actually now in chapter 11, verse 82, and chapter 15, verse 74. So this particular, in fact, the entire verse, verse 4 of chapter 105, is referenced in chapter 11, verse 82, and chapter 15, verse 74. So let's take a look at that. Let's navigate to chapter 11. Verse 82 first, and take a look at what God is talking about in that particular scenario. So I'm going to navigate to chapter 11, verse 82. Perfect. So instead of starting from verse 82 of chapter 11, which is Surah Hud, I'm going to start with six, chapter or verse 69, because that's really the context of the entire scenario to better understanding. So I'm just going to read through it until I come to that verse 82. And our messengers came to Ibrahim with glad tidings. They said, Peace, said he, Peace. And he tarried not to bring a roasted cow. And when he saw their hands reaching not towards it, he was strained. From them felt fear. From They said, Fear thou not. We are sent people of Lut. And his wife stood, and she laughed. And we gave her glad tidings of his hawk. And after his hawk, Yaqub. She said, Oh, woe is me. Shall I bear a child when I'm an old woman? And this, my husband, is an old man. This is an amazing thing. They said, Art thou amazed at the command of God? The mercy of God and his blessings are on you, people of the house. He is praiseworthy, glorious. And when the alarm had left Ibrahim and the glad tidings, we, he pleaded with us for the people of Lut. Ibrahim was forbearing, passionate. Oh, Ibrahim. Forsake thou this, the command of thy Lord has come, and come to them is a punishment which cannot be repelled. And when our messengers came to Lut, he was distressed from them, and straightened with unease for them. And he said, This is a fateful day. And his people came to him, running towards them, running towards him. And they had been doing evil before. He said, O oh my people, these are my daughters, they are pure. So be in prudent fear of God, and disgrace me not concerning my guest. Is there not among you a right-minded man? They said, Thou knowest we have no right to thy daughters, and thou knowest what we desire. He said, That I had power over you, or could take shelter with strong supporters? Said they, O Lut, we are messengers of thy Lord. They will not reach thee, and travel thou with thy household, by watches of the night. And let not any one of you turn around, save thy wife. There will befall her what befalls them. Their appointment is in the morning. Is then the morning not near? Verse 80. And when our command came, we overthrew it and rained upon it stones of brimstone piled up in layers. So this is what is the first evidence in the Quran that references cross-referencing 
Surah 105, Hijaratan min sijil alayha or wa amtarna, you know, which is again, tayran, right? Which is like rained upon them. Stones, brimstones, min sijil, piled up in layers. So this is the first evidence. So again, the context of this particular surah, Surah Hud, chapter 11, verse 69 to 82 that I just read, talking about Ibrahim, messengers of God first came to Ibrahim, and they told Ibrahim that, you know, we're here for Lut, to destroy Lut's community, right? Including his wife, she'll not survive. And then Ibrahim was a little apprehensive, but this was the commandment of God. Then these messengers went to Lut, and then Lut called his people, and then told them that this is going to happen. The city is going to be destroyed morning, before morning. People didn't really formed any judgment or they didn't really like what Luth had to say, right? So the context or the actual evidence more or less relate to maybe weak judgment, right? Because people didn't really care about, it. all right, great. So this is the first evidence. Let's go to chapter 15 and verse 74. Perfect. So chapter 15, before I go to verse 74, start from verse 51 because this will perfectly correlate to the context, okay? All right, so let's start with verse 51. And inform thou them of the guests of Ibrahim, when they entered upon him and said, Peace. He said, We are afraid of you. They said, Fear thou not, we bring thee glad tidings of learned lad. He said, Bring you glad tidings to me. The old age has touched me. Of what then brings you glad tidings? They said, We bring the glad tidings aright. So be thou not of those who despair, he said, and those who despair of the mercy of his Lord, save those who are astray. So once again, up till verse 56, just same story that we just looked at in the previous surah, right? Chapter 11, Surah Hud. Same story, reiterating, right? Repeating itself. Great. Let's go to verse 57. So he said, Ibrahim is saying, right? Then what is your case, O emissaries? They said, We are sent to an evil doing people to save the house of Luth. So once again, chapter 15 also references people of Luth or the house of Luth. Them we will deliver altogether, save his wife, whom we have decreed that she be those who stay. And when the emissaries came to the house of Luth, he said, You are strangers. They said, The truth is, we bring thee that concerning which they doubted. And we bring the the truth, and we speak the truth. So travel thou with thy household by watches of the night, and follow thou their back. And let not any one of you turn around. So again, the same story that we just looked at in chapter eleven is sort of repeating itself in chapter in slight variation. The context is the same. And depart to where you are commanded. And we decreed for him that command that the root of those shall be cut off in the morning. And the people of the town came rejoicing. So now the people of Lut's town, right, are coming to Lut rejoicing. He said, they are my guests, so disgrace me not. So Lut is telling these people that these emissaries, these messengers are, you know, Lut's guests. So disgrace me not, and be in prudent fear of God, and shame me not. And they said, did we not forbid you all mankind? He said, these are my daughters, must act by their life. They were in their intoxication, wandering blindly. And the blast took them at the break of day, and we overthrew it and rained upon it stones of brimstone. So here it is again in verse 74. So same exact verse, right? وَأَمْتَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ هِجَارَةً مِنْ سِجِيلِ In that are proof for those who examine closely. It is upon a road long stand. In that is a proof for the believers. Perfect. So now we took a look at both instances as per Quranic evidence in chapter 11 verse 82 and chapter 15 verse 74. That in both instances where these words are mentioned, right? basically represents the story of Luth and how the city was destroyed by stones, right? So the entire 
city was turned upside down, earthquake happened, buried everyone. So this is the Quranic evidence of this word. Now let's navigate back to Surah 105 so that we can actually know a true meaning of the word feel based on our Quranic understanding. Perfect. So back to chapter 105. So let's quickly, only five verses in this surah. Let's take a look at those. In the name of God, the Almighty, the Merciful. Hast thou not considered how thy Lord dealt with those people of the elephant or people weak in judgment? Because the next form of evidence that we have in verse 3, verse 4, right? We have the word tayr, ababil, the successive waves, right? Flights. And then we have ramihim behijarat min sajid, hurling upon them stones of brimstone. So, in my humble opinion, of course, since the Quran is clear, and we're not injecting any external text in the Quran. The Quran has all the answers. It is a book of guidance for all mankind, okay? not just for a specific group of people. It is for every. So, hence the actual word al fil, the ashab al fil, represents people of weak judgment because of this Quranic evidence that this particular verse 3 and 4 are essentially correlating or cross referencing people of Luth and how they were destroyed by the same brimstones, same type of scenario. So it's much easier for us to now understand that the Quran, since we're not injecting anything, any external text, we're not doing so. The Ashab al-Fil would correctly imply of weak judgment. Here's the conclusion. So it's most likely not the elephant story, okay? It's people of weak judgment. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, comment below. Post in the discussion area. I'd be happy to clarify once again. In the end, I'd like to thank Sam Gerens for this understanding, and of course, Muhammad Asad also for this understanding for the Quran. So I just wanted to quickly run through this concept. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I regularly post these lectures based on the Quran only understanding. Quran only research. So with this, Assalamu alaikum.